and welcome to More Than Roommates. I'm Dan, here with my roommate Graham. What's up, what's up? Graham, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm enjoying Memorial Day. Yes. That long weekend. A nice three-day weekend. Yeah. We how have... are you doing? Sorry. Oh, asking me. Yeah. Turning tables. I'm good. It's been a nice... Um, <clears throat> relaxing three-day weekend we did a little bit outdoor stuff we've gotten back on track at the gym three days in a row Hot so streak <laughs> be ready for our summer thirst traps once we are <laughs> summer ready i'm not there yet but... me neither but i feel like we've been eating healthy so i feel like we're ready to get snatched really i feel like have we though mm, we've eaten out a little bit we have lately, we have but, but in between nah. we've gotten a really good gist of just eating clean and a lot more protein than what yeah. I also have discovered um, a blend jet. A not yeah, your sponsored. birthday gift, right? Yes, yeah. Graham's mom oh, got yeah, me yeah. a blend jet. And I don't think we talked about that on your birthday no, episode because it came after, yeah. right? I hadn't yeah. opened it. Oop, That's our right. guest star might be coming to join us. <laughs> she has emerged. We kicked her out of her spot, so she was very She's upset. salty, man. But yes, you I got a blend and... jet, and it has been life-changing. You want one now. I do. You know, I've got one kind of similar. It was like a pre- blend jet so it will it's like a pro mix or something mm -hmm. it has a little mixer but it's plastic yeah or like rubber maybe like or like a silicone so i used to have it a works, ninja but, but yeah this one is can't just, blend up ice like the blend jet yeah, yeah this thing it really does a good job and then it is super easy to clean and then you just kind of bring it with you <clears throat> it sounds like we're sponsored but we're not <laughs> but i must also take a moment to thank um paul the music man he created a new intro and outro song for us so i hope you were digging the vibes we love it so you do want to say thank you to the music yeah, man um, thank you for um doing that little ditty for us we appreciate it it's keeping the vibes going i yeah. love it very 50s it's it's very um even like 50s 60s mm -hmm. kind of like cia to call him the music man the music you know? man. i know i was texting him and i was like because i got his contact and i was like are you the music man he's like that is how i will only go by from now yeah. on so um, now he only wears black suits yeah hats, shades, shades you know a, like one of those the, yeah the full Full on 60s CIA man, yes, music man. <laughs> um, but Pride is coming up, and oh, we May is almost over. I it's know, almost Pride Month. Yeah, I can't yeah. believe it's like summer break. I'm I just like, <laughs> oh, yeah, whoa, this is insane. Like, it just snuck up on us. It feels like it always mm. does because. It feels like you plan all the, oh, in the summer, we're going to do this and this. And then it's really like two Everyone months Everyone hits you up, too. Mm -hmm. And like your weekend just fill up fast. Yeah. For sure, too. So yeah. um, last year was my first pride being out as far as um, I was out during the pandemic. But of mm. course, there wasn't anything going on. So we actually, that was my first pride. Was that yours? It was. Yeah. I, um, yeah, the pandemic kind of killed, you know, a few, few years there. So yeah. I know we talk about that all the time, but like, yeah, it's there's true. no way to make up that lost time, you know? Yeah. But. So we went down to Kansas City for a pride bar crawl. And it was an experience, to say the least. It was, it was fun, yeah. It was very fun. It was cool to be with a, a group of friends, but um, it was really hot that day, I remember. And mm. we went to one bar, and then we, and when it was time to go to the next one, we went all the way across Kansas City, it felt like. Yeah, we, yeah, we walked. We took like a little tram. <laughs> I don't know. We were we were moving all over the place. It was yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah. And we got to meet some people. And then um, the plan was to go to see. I had never seen a drag show. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. We get all the way there. And then our group was like, eh, we're ready for food. So I was <laughs> like, no, I want to see the first drag yeah. show. So um, I saw like a minute of it. But um, recently, we went to our first drag show. You yeah, had a um, couple of our mutual friends. I had a friend. He had a friend. And they were both having a joint birthday party. And they had kind of like a uh, drag brunch. Yeah, it was kind of thing. It was actually really fun. It was in the evening, but it yes. wasn't actually brunch time. But our friend Dorciana, she made like a whole dope like 
birthday brunch meal mm-hmm. like it was fire for sure and my favorite out. thing about going mm-hmm. to these events is it never fails they always pick graham out of the crowd and interact every with time <laughs> and as someone who it's my biggest fear to be picked on in a crowd oh, same so it, <laughs> girl same <laughs> yeah, girl, it makes me yeah. so happy that, that it wasn't you yes and i know that it's not it, gonna be me as long as they pick you so yeah. I'm happy with that. My first drag show, too. Did we talk about this? I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about so it. So I went to a drag brunch, actually, like, over brunch in San Antonio. And, um, of course, you know, I get called out, you know, like, some of the drag queens are like, ooh, he must be cute or something. You know, they're kind of, like, winking at me and stuff. And then the show started after we ate. Like, I, I was just, I knew I was on borrowed time, like, I figured I was going to have to go up there, you know, Yeah, I had to like tell everyone my name and, you know, I told them I'm from Kansas and they were like, Ooh, Toto, you know, or whatever. I don't know. They're just giving me stuff about being from Kansas, you know, (laughs) but I had to, um, I had to give the drag queen a lap dance (laughs) in front of, and this place was huge. Like it was like I don't know, I had to like mentally like shut my brain off. Yeah, for and just yeah, <laughs> and how kind of I don't know. I lived in the moment. It was yeah. fun. Like yeah, you're good about that. Like even this this one was a lot more tame though. Oh like, yeah, you just, they just put a hat on you. I think and, and like, a kinda, and like a veil or something. Yeah, I think she like, came out with like a wedding dress. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So what? Tell me, what are your thoughts like now that you've been to like a full drag show before yeah Yeah. i love it are there certain things you liked um i of course just love the theatrics i love um just the performances and the outfits and stuff i think it's cool um i can't get over just the constant fear that they're gonna interact with me in any way (laughs) and that's fine but i'm just dude you were on tv this guy was on tv like going live and stuff but that's different like (laughs) yeah (laughs) i I would be fine like i know i would like play it up but you know in my head i'm like oh god you know like i was always that kid in the back of the class like don't pick me please same (laughs) so um but yeah. other than that, yeah, I also like same going to a, a comedy show. Um, my fear was always to get like them, pulled out of the crowd. Yeah, yeah, or them heckle you or something or, you know, not be a heckler, but for them to interact yeah. with you. Same thing uh, kind of happened to me. So my dad and I, like our tradition, we would go to World's Fun like once or twice a year, you know, at least. And um, if it were the summer, my dad would get overheated from standing in the sun and He'd always want to go into like Worlds of Fun. They have a lot of um, kind of like little 30, 20 or 30 minute sort of like musical shows mm-hmm. and stuff. You yeah. know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. I don't, like, they have how, like little yeah. booths or, you know, like a little. You go into pop- a building. It's in okay. a building. Okay. There's like this little 50s kind of looking sort of uh, building or whatever, kind okay. of old timey. Worlds of Fun is like a theme park. Here oh, in yeah. The yeah. City for those yeah. who don't know. But yeah, yes, thank keep, you. Keep going. But yeah, that was always my fear too, because they would always pull someone out of the crowd. So I'd be like, Dad, we're sitting up, you know, on the balcony, and or we're sitting way far away or in the middle, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, One time I didn't get picked on. But. I've only <laughs> been to two comedy shows, and my best friend from high school invited me one summer, and we went to see Chris D'Elia, oh. and um, it was a while ago, and as we were walking in, m- my friend was like, oh, it's always my fear that they're going to get mad and cancel the show partway through the performance, and I was like, I'm like, okay, that's a weird fear. Most people are worry about getting picked on or called on. But it ended up happening and it wasn't even like a lot of hecklers, but there was just like two hecklers like it like it only happened twice. And on the second time, he freaked out and he was like, I will cancel the show. You just have to sit here for one hour. Let me get through this set. And if you can't do that, I'm out of here. And I was like, whoa, you were right. Like, yeah, yeah. Oof. So he didn't actually cancel, but um, (laughs) that was pretty wild. Yeah. So going back to our drag show, Mm -hmm. um, so who was our gal was her name jenny tonic like jen and tonic so. yeah oh my god she was so fun so i wanted to chime in on my favorite part oh yeah she killed it she did like a full britney spears set like mm-hmm. the whole night she did 
I think like Baby One More Time. Or no, wait, did she do Baby One More Time? Yeah, yeah she, she dressed came out up with that, and then she did the toxic. She did toxic for sure. That was fun. And the the red jumpsuit. Yeah. Uh, I can't even remember. It's so bad. I know. Man. I don't know. But it was yeah. all it was all great. It was. They amazing. all were really good. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, she was really good at like keeping the audience energized and keeping the show moving forward. Um, but something we wanted to talk about for this episode is something that I keep seeing a lot on TikTok. Um, but there's this TikTok going around where this woman is doing street interviews and she interviews a gay couple. And um, they were, she asked them, like, what are your thoughts on monogamy in a gay relationship? And the couple was like, oh, either they are um, have an open relationship or they're all cheaters. Ooh. And everyone's kind of getting stuck wow. about that. That's messed up. So, so what are your thoughts? And that was just a random person on the street? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was just a gay couple. And they were wow. like, they were obviously an open relationship. And they're like, all gay couples are like that. And so, I mean, that is a big stereotype in our community. It is a and, huge stereotype. Um, yeah. So what are your thoughts on that? You know, I have a lot of thoughts on that. Okay. And a big thing that comes to my mind, and maybe I'm wrong, tell me in the comments if you don't agree with me, or if you do, you're not going to hurt my feelings, but I feel like a lot of gay kids, you know, especially like our generation, when they're, they were, we were in high school, like, we weren't allowed to be in an open relationship with, you know, a same-sex partner, like male Mm -hmm. or female or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like that probably plays into a lot of it, you know? Like, you didn't get to have that experience, you know, like your young, you know, first boyfriend or or whatever, right? And kind of getting to, like, date around and progress through life, you know? Because high school, not to say that all high school relationships don't work out, don't get me wrong, But I would say for the most part, you know, people grow, you know, when they're younger, you know, they may connect with someone and we just didn't get that opportunity to progress that way. And it makes me wonder, is there something more to that? You know, let us know in the comments. Let us know what you think. Yeah. And I also think that there's something too, like when you have suppressed it for so long and then you don't get to experience dating around or. Right. And then you like just don't want to be tied down. Essentially, Um, I could see that as being um, part of it. I also think there it didn't used to be a lot of representation of just normal gay couples, you know? Um, It's either like the media movies and stuff. It's always a, yeah. And again, absolutely nothing wrong. You be you. Yeah. But the media always plays into stereotypes. Yeah. You know, it's just like, no one is like, in. they're never dating anyone. They're just like the odd character, you know, in the back, like interested in like a straight person or something, you know, that's like out of their league. Yeah. So to clarify, Graham and I are monogamous, but Mm -hmm. there has been a lot of situations that have come up where people, well, first of all, you want to share the story about Pride last year? Yeah. So last year, super flattering, of course, but we had a guy in our group and um, he had the hots for me. And I, I could tell and, that he was like kind of flirty with. Which is fine. I think and I'm kind of. Would you say I'm a flirty person yes, too? Yeah. Like I have a flirty personality. Yeah. I, well, it, it it's fun. Yeah. I, I'm like okay. <laughs> I'm you know secure in our relationship, and I don't know. I could see it wasn't like, anything. Like there it was wasn't nothing. Like you were yeah. leading them on. Though. Right. No, yeah, yeah, not yeah. at all. Um. But yeah, they. You. Yeah. Sorry. So. Um. Eventually, you know, the, the we had been out all day long mm-hmm. drinking all day long you know with, this is at the final destination of the night right yeah. that last bar we went to and um i think him and i went in to go get shots for everyone or something or we went in to go he get a drink he followed you to get shots oh. you got up and you're like i'm gonna get us drinks that's and right he got up and went with you yeah and he just like kind of like stood by me at the bar and we just you know we're talking like we're having a good time and then yeah, it just kind of came out of nowhere. Like, he was just curious, like, if, like, I don't know. It was maybe framed a little So wrong. here's how. I, from what I remember, 
it was oh well if you know it first, doesn't work out between you two call me you know what well, i mean first it was he <laughs> asked if we were oh. exclusive oh true 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 yes which that is fine you can ask that because yeah. maybe we weren't and that would be one thing so he asked are you exclusive and you're like oh yes we've been happily together like we're not and then he goes For over on two years see, at that point yeah <laughs> this is where i think you crossed the line then he goes oh well if it doesn't work out give me a call yeah and then he proceeds to come up to me being very drunk and was like because we had never hung out before he was a friend of a friend and he comes up to me and he's like oh you know as after today we still got to hang out you guys are so cool i want us all to be friends and of course i was like oh yeah you know this is awesome a new friend but then he tells me later. I just wanted to, and we're very transparent, you know, in our relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, we're not, we're not going to say and talk smack. No. But we're going to be honest and, you know, forthcoming with each other. Yeah. So, so. later on, he told me what happened. And yeah. I'm like, this person went and did yeah. all that, which is fine. But I was just like. I, and again, like I said, a lot of liquor involved. Yeah. I'm sure that was, you know, what do they, what do they say? Like, Water under the- dr- No, drunk thoughts speak sober words or something like that yeah, right something like, something that. like that yeah <laughs> drunk but lips speak sober thoughts or something or something yeah. like that yeah but well, but that's not the only situation we've had a lot of people that kind of have it more happens with you <laughs> but they ask like if we're exclusive and I think, again, that's a fine question to ask. But, yeah, um, I think it, it all comes down to respect at the end of the day. And, you know, I think and it's not even just, you know, for gay people to like polyamory is everywhere is, you know, like I know straight people that are interested in that, too. And that's totally fine. Yeah. You know, I think it's just all about respect. You know what I mean? For what people want, as long as there's a mutual level of respect and then. Yeah, you can have the conversation, but yeah, I know it's been a lot. Of, even when before I met you, there were a lot of people on dating apps that were looking for a third. So it was just yeah, even married couples and stuff. And that's just I'm like, whoa. So obviously we click really, really well. And that really reinforces us being monogamous. But from like a personal standpoint, like I, like, have to manage my own life and then trying to, like, you know what I mean? Like, there's the whole layer of, you know, our lives together. I just personally cannot imagine having, like, a third person. Oh, yeah. I think, like, first of all, us plus a dog fills up the bed. Yeah, right. (laughs) Well, and I'd get too jealous. I think I, I would, too. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, jealousy, maybe not always healthy, but it's a feeling you yeah know? it's something that you know you have to acknowledge about yourself and what you desire and yeah what you're looking for out of a partner in a relationship for sure yeah. but mm-hmm. so hopefully pride this year we're planning to go back hopefully we'll have a little more fun experience but that's something we've kind of we've gone out to a couple gay bars and um we're hoping to like meet people like and find new gay friends. And mm-hmm. every time we've like not been approached at all. So I don't know <laughs> if we just give off those vibes of like, don't come up to us. But we, we, we're like, oh, maybe we'll meet some people and talk to people. Yeah. Never. Just to talk. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, I so as we get to KC, you know, if we can frequent places more, I'm sure it would naturally happen to. Yeah. It just there's really only like one queer space here in our city yeah that i know of anyway yeah. that we went to the drag show obviously but... right well and so since yeah. pride is around the corner have you heard all of the target controversy oh yeah but th- they've been doing this for like what five years at least they've yeah had like a but full... i think um this year it's gotten a little um extreme as far as like some of the stuff that were on the shirts oh um I, one of them I, I wish i could do some research do you, you want me to look on my phone? phone hey let's let's take a short break make yep, sure we'll we're still recording we'll be right back okay okay we're back we so are back <laughs> we did a little research about this target controversy um, it seems like there were some issues with like the certain t- merchandise search- yeah people extreme groups 
are not happy with. Yeah. It seemed like for the most part. Though. And I did see an interesting take. Someone posted on social media, you know, Target received a little backlash, so they are pulling some of their items. Because employees are not feeling safe. Correct. People are going into the stores wherever. And right. Either, and you know, who knows what people are doing. Right. It's extreme. It's backwards. Oh, no, you're good. Um, But... Um, something yes employees felt unsafe that's why they were pulling some of it and while no one should feel unsafe but someone brought up in the social media post they're like okay well that's how gay and transgender people feel queer people yeah. fear 365 days out of the exactly. year while they're just feeling it during pride month yeah so i don't know i mean it yeah. is a much to do about not nothing but it is about clothes yeah. ultimately and but what are your thoughts about companies you know monetizing the pride month? yeah i mean i think there are pros and cons you know what i mean obvious pros it's putting the issue front and center you mm -hmm. know and it's making it to where it's visible you know we're visible right. to people and yeah i'm not super against it either like i yeah. think if i see more people wearing it around like that makes me more comfortable if i yeah. see people that i wouldn't suspect to wear stuff like that wearing it i i think that is awesome to have and target's gonna sell stuff no matter what yeah. if they don't have a pride collection they're gonna have something else filling in that section mm -hmm. yeah so that and my thoughts too I'm, I'm pretty sure and i could be wrong but I feel like I had read at some point that they have, you know, queer designers kind of come in and design their collection cool. for them. Too. I would hope that they would donate but, some of the proceeds as well to um, LGBT, LGBT um, organizations or um, stuff like that. That would be awesome. Yeah, the Trevor Project or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if it's just a cash grab. Oh. I mean sure like You're darned companies if like want your money let's just be honest yeah. we don't have to be naive about it right either. darned if you do darned if you don't yeah. at this point either you say something yeah and you're doing too much or if you don't say anything you're not so i don't know yeah another um take i have on the whole issue too um people like to bring up that oh what about the children the children see this merch you know like you're gonna corrupt them so here's my two cents. And actually, you know what? I'm not going to throw those out there yet. I'm going to take my change okay. back. I want to ask you, Dan. Okay. What age do you think you knew that you were attracted to boys? Oh, or so, men? so young. Like, like, like throw second, a number. Second grade, like seven. Yeah. Grade. And, you know, I found a journal when I was cleaning out the basement, like from, I think I was probably in fourth or third grade. And um, I talked about how I had a crush on two people and one was a girl and one was a boy. Wow. And like I had never told anyone, but I would have been, you know, pretty young third, fourth grade. Yeah. Like I well, and, and, and then what about uh, straight merch? You know what yeah. I mean? Like there, no one has an issue with a T-shirt that says, you know, you throw on a little boy, you know, yeah, a baby boy a that heartbreaker. says, I'm looking, or yeah, heartbreaker or whatever, you know. Yeah, looking for babe watch. And yeah. yeah. Put them in onesies and So stuff. it's just like, if you're, yeah. and I'm not saying, like, obviously, like, I think anything sexualized with children is a huge no-no, it's nasty, but at yeah. the same time, like, you, can, you can't just cherry pick what you like and what you don't. Yeah. <laughs> it, it goes both ways for I sure too so yeah that's just my two cents uh, you know i i knew from a young age too like where my you know i guess sexuality or maybe not sexuality but spectrum wide you know yeah. because it was of course you know before puberty mm -hmm. but clearly you know yeah you know what i mean and that's what sorry straights but that's what you don't understand <laughs> People, yeah. people don't get it, you know? Yeah. For whatever reason, one way or another, we are the way we are. Yeah, you know? it's not a choice. Uh, yeah. But while we're hitting all the controversial things, <laughs> what are your thoughts on the Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light controversy? I think, again, people are just looking for a way to be triggered, you know? Yeah. A company like that, 
wants to come in and try to be inclusive and diverse and there's always going to be backlash like yeah i feel like it doesn't matter what you do you know it was definitely extreme for the backlash though like they're still reeling from that which i just cannot believe i thought it would have blown over by now that's what people don't like our community yeah and And that's why i don't want us to succeed i feel like in some cases maybe that's just like a hardened view but like well and it's that's yeah you know people say like oh it's 2023 we're past all this but obviously (sighs) if i hear that one more time especially from a friend i'm gonna snap yeah for real like i don't want to hear oh it's this year yeah like for sure I, i mean okay i don't want to like call you out but didn't you tell me at one point like when you were out like doing new stuff like setting up your camera on your own like didn't people drive by and call you the f word oh stuff? yeah all yeah. the time people would always say the f slur and then what if and i think i was doing a facebook live um at like the scene of a shooting and I was reading the comments as people were live chatting and someone was like, oh, he's just out there to look at the cop's butts. And I'm like, someone, someone said that. About yeah. You? Wow. Yeah. And like, I'm pretty sure someone had died. And I'm like, yeah, again, that's all they're concerned about. And, yeah. You know, and then I checked myself. I'm like, wow, am I speaking in like a really high voice right now? Or like, oh. you know, like it instantly. And like, see, it's trauma. Like mm-hmm. A lot of us have a lot of trauma. And yeah. you can probably take that back to the beginning of the conversation, too, you know, where you get one little bit of attention and you may be willing to go hook up with a million different people, you know what I mean? Because you're getting validation. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big issue in our community. Like we've been invalidated for so long that, you know, any kind of sense of validation feels good. Yeah, for sure. And, and for the, the company is representing us and then, there's backlash and people are like, well, just don't force it down our throats. And it's like, that's the issue. Like no yeah. one was doing that. Bud Light literally changed a, so- a beer can and everyone freaked out. It's like, that's not forcing it down. Like that's just like changing the Oreo container for a month. It's like, you're, you're yeah. fine. Like, and people freak out. They so do. it's like, <laughs> it's wild out yeah. there. Yeah. There's just, like I said, unfortunately a lot of extreme groups, you know? Yeah. You good? Are, I'm, you, are you checking out your swoveralls? Yes, but they just ripped <gasps> my swoveralls. Oh, how? I don't know. Oh, no. Look at this huge line. Uh, <gasps> oh, no. You better contact the guys. Oh, my See God. See if we can get you a new pair. <laughs> yeah. Jeez oh. Louise. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. I had a wardrobe mishap. <laughs> I was making sure something didn't happen. I saw you looking at your leg. I know. I'm just (laughs) shocked. These are expensive. Yike. Okay. I know. You're looking like my Luigi. Yeah. I got the... I'm just trying to get ready for the Mario movie. I should have thrown on my red tee. Yeah. Mario. (laughs) That would have been awesome. Well, I think we covered a lot of controversial stuff today. Yeah. That might be enough damage for one day. I think I've said everything I wanted to say, you know, as it came to my mind. I can't think of anything else. Yeah. If um, anyone, you know, you want to throw in your two cents. Yeah. Or if there are any other topics you want to, you know, want us to talk about. Yeah. Drop them below. <laughs> Let us know your pride plans. Let us know what your thoughts on the controversy. Um, and yeah, we will... is Target like the devil? Yeah. I mean, I've been in love with Target since career opportunities came out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll see you next week. All right. Bye. Peace. Bye.